Yes. But yeah, going back to, you know, the whole networking thing, I think it's it's super dope that Durban actually has a platform for, it doesn't matter what you're doing, if you're an indie artist, for instance, or, or a band, there's events like food festivals that you can, you know, approach events organizers yeah. from, there's bars with, with karaoke nights and, and open mics, there's um, there's first Thursdays where you can where people can you know approach people to to do their own thing yeah. as well. There's you know food festivals, all the rest. If you're a hip hop artist, as Styles said, the Bath Center. Um, I mean, there's a lot, but networking also is very much on social media nowadays. Yeah, which is dope because people don't realize how accessible these artists in South Africa actually are, like mm. Kyle Dodge, Shekana, all the rest. Literally with Instagram and and Twitter and and Facebook not as much Facebook, but Instagram and Twitter, they're literally one message away. Yeah. You, you literally just have to send them a message and they'll get it. I mean, I, for the first time, um, I, I spoke to Carl Deitch. Now he's with, um, um, what's, what's the record label called with Sketchy Bongo? Wolfpack. He's with the Wolfpack. I first got in contact with him via DM on Twitter. It was m- the most random DM ever. I literally said to him, I dig the song that you released with A1 Wolf. And he responded, he's like, yo, I heard, I've, I've heard about you, hook me up with your number. And before I could even, like, I was like, whoa, like that was, and yeah, he built he's, that. Yeah, he's, he's very, he's very uh, friendly and very much like willing to socialize with people, yeah, which, 100%, is, which is cool. Yeah, 100%. So that networking was pretty much through social media, which I encourage people. <laughs> Don't sugarcoat and be like, oh, no, no, how are you? Just say I'm straight. I love your sound. I make music too. Here is some links to my music. Take a listen yeah. to it. If you're interested, I've got something that I can send to you. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. It's either they're going to reply or they won't reply, but don't give up. Going back to your second question about equipment, you don't have to put money into your music career when you're starting off. We have done better than most people who actually go to a professional studio and all of that jazz. Um, because we're making music because we're passionate about it, not because we have the money to do it. And like I said, some of the songs that I've recorded, some of the best songs that I've recorded is off a little performance mic. Performance microphone, and all I do is I add some, you know, some vocal processing on it, some some, uh, some good stuff. <laughs> yeah, a little spice. I, I add some sparkles on it. <laughs> I'm like, wow, Sugar really spice and everything <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, don't, don't, don't spend mm. stupid money on trying to make music. If you need to spend some money, spend some money, yeah. but don't spend huge amounts. That's, yeah. that's my best advice. And invest. If you're going to work at a bar, you're going to be a waitress, put money aside towards a small microphone or... The bare, the bare minimum. Your, yeah. If you're a producer, your monitors, your, your uh, MIDI keyboard, maybe if, you're, if, you're, if you want to do MIDI stuff, and maybe a... Perf- um, not a performance, a recording microphone as well. Mm. Uh, but yeah, just the bare basics. I mean, what you basically want to show off if you're sending a demo to maybe a major label or to another label is you want to show off what you're capable of doing. Mm. And you don't really need this huge microphone that's going to give you the finished product. If the, if a label likes what you're doing, they might actually mm. call you in or invest money on you to send you to a proper studio as well. Uh, if you want to work with other labels or if you want to do stuff with other people, there's always going to be opportunities for you to, to do that without needing the stuff yourself. That's really great insightful pieces of information because we've got so many students these days or potential students that come through and they talk about what they'd like to get involved with the processes that they use and it's good to hear that there is a will and a way to, to Definitely, make these things yeah. happen um another question that we did have this is one from one of your biggest fans um, <laughs> he wanted to ask also on networking so how much does private networking influence on where public music goes mm. so Oof. wanting to know about your channels and how it's able to reach that public sector yeah i think that's a big one especially because i've actually experienced that recently i have a small network of of producers from north america that i'm very much involved with uh, one of them is called awol talk another one is called uh, sosas another one is called elex they're from you know from america from from canada they're from Vancouver, Salt Lake City, uh, San Diego, Florida. It's crazy. I mean, it's a small little network of people. They're all in different places, but they're all such good friends. And I've kind of, you know, stepped in there. Just literally by sending sending one of the guys, his name is Sosa, I sent him a beat because I was a big fan of his after I heard his collab with a guy called John Casey, who's also a good friend of mine here from, from uh, Pretoria. It's weird how the network works. It's like you, you, you have a friend that you met through another friend in, in, uh, in, in Pretoria. Now, this friend made a song with a guy in Canada and now you're sliding into the DMs of that guy that, that you know 
uh, that guy from Canada who makes amazing music. Send him some stuff. He loves it. He sends it now to his friend who owns a record label in Salt Lake City. Uh, that's Christopher Awol Talk. And he's like, yo, I love this. Let me sign this on, on my record label called Solar. And from there, a, a small uh, private network that I have of, of those people now, that release got huge attention from bigger artists like Holly, uh, Sem from New Zealand, and a whole bunch of huge names internationally who I've looked up to for, for the last five, six years. They've they reposted the song on SoundCloud. And I think your small little private network that you have is a lot bigger than you actually think it is. Because um, in today's society, as, as people call it, the network society, after the information society now this new society is the network society where everything is kind of linked together and it's beautiful i think it's beautiful so many opportunities that are presenting themselves it is a very interesting time for collaborations and networking to definitely to exist so much easier than, mm. than it was before 100 yeah. percent. so that just makes more possibilities available mm. for any artist yeah okay? mm. for the future of your collaborations what would you like to see more of in the past you've talked about doing a little bit of a personal delving into yourselves and your identities. And you've talked about doing not so much commercial, but you do have commercial elements. Yeah. What, what are the sounds that you see as potential hits for the future? Because I mean, we're going into a lot of electronic mergings now yeah. and a lot of different styles. Where do you see the future of Durban music going? The <laughs> first <laughs> yeah. No, I believe that, uh, that the beauty th beautiful thing of having like maybe a four or five or six song EP is you can have those songs that will make it onto radio um, that are very commercial, that don't really have a lot of thought behind them, but are also well produced. Uh, creatively speaking, I'd call those songs a plateau. And you can still go above the plateau with some of the other songs that may not go onto radio on that EP. But because now those songs are getting attention from radio play, people will check out the EP and listen to those songs. And that's the beauty of you know having that kind of project. And that's what we're trying to do at the moment now. And mm. I, I believe that... There's a big merge now between electronic and, and organic. As, as it was a couple of years ago, um, it's coming back now, I believe, in, in a form of, of a very like organic house kind, of, kind yeah. of vibe, which has emerging with a lot of different genres like funk, hip hop, even rock elements sometimes, mm -hmm. and jazz. So I think that's kind of the direction that, that I believe music is going into at the moment in the popular field. But that's just my observation. Only time will tell. Yeah, like I had, I had somebody speak to me recently and they said to me, all your music is catchy. So I'm like, that's, that's, that's the strategy that I have mm. with, with Hendrik. It's so important having catchy music. Even 100%. just a, one top line in a track, that's catchy. Mm. And that song will make it onto radio. I mean, 100%. Listen, listen to the song called, uh, I think it's called Body by a Loud Luxury. Mm. It's literally just got that one vocal line that is from the beginning. And it's so catchy. You can hear what song it is from the, from the get-go. That's allowed people's ears to perk up. Every time we hear Styles and Hendrik Yoga's track, it's not going to be a common sound. It's going to be something that they will vibe to. Even the most mellow song would probably be catchy enough for people to listen to. And um, with the EP that we're working on, I think there's a couple of, there are a few catchy songs, but there are a few serious songs as well. Where people two are, very serious songs. Two yeah. very, very serious songs. Um, the one song, can I, can I name it? 100%. I'm sure we can. Yeah. The one song is called 18, and 18 is literally a song that's dedicated to kids who are about to leave school, and basically how they need to prep themselves for the real world, and they need to prep themselves for real love. Um, I'm not to say that they're not necessarily in love when they're back at school, but it's just talking about how they can now branch into a world where they must be expected to, to, to have the unexpected to happen. Yeah. I've also released a song called Baddies, which is probably one of my catchiest songs out. And i got a good friend who plays rugby. His name is Kerwin Bosch. He plays for the <laughs> Sharks. And I was with him last week, and he actually said to me, do you know how deep your song is? He's the first person to ever say that to me because when you listen to the lyrics of Baddies, it's very groovy. Mm. When you listen to the lyrics, it's talking about a specific group of people who are going out you're being judged for who they are that's what the song is all about people dance it like yeah cool beat and i think that's the cool thing is that people get to focus on the production <laughs> and they're like whoa hendrick knows what he's doing <clears throat> then you get a person like Cohen bosch who listens to it and says the whole song is very groovy but now it puts me in my feels because i used to be that person i used to go out and people used to judge me for being a specific or type of person and 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 
I guess we're expressing ourselves in different ways and mm. we, we're marketing our music in, in that way. And once we marinate and get into the industry, I think we'll be free enough to then talk about more of mm. what we've yeah. experienced and what's happening around us. And so we've marketed ourselves in that way and it's, it's worked in our favor. And we're obviously going to branch out and work with other artists as well. We're never going to limit our talents. No, of course, yeah. We're never going to limit our talents. We, we all, he's my go-to guy. But I also know that there's other people who want to work with me but I need to make that time for for working with Hendrik and working with, with other artists as well. So don't limit yourself. If you want to work at rock artists, work at rock artists. If you want to work, work at pop artists, that's the thing. Univ music is such a universal language and you should never box yourself. That's why, I, that's why I don't call myself a rapper. I call myself an artist, musician, because I work with musicians, whether they be pop artists, rock artists, or whatever. Mm. So don't ever limit yourself. Hundred percent. Well, thank you both so <coughs> much for coming through today. It's been a pleasure. Really thank you, man. It, especially for your Thursday insight session and today for coming through again. Really exciting stuff heading your way, and we're so excited to hear more about your big projects coming ahead because yeah. it sounds like it's been one of those really exciting weeks. So good it things to come. Has been. Thank you so, so much, much, man. Thank Hopefully, you. we will be back very soon. There we go. We are we? So. For sure, definitely. Like I said last week, Thursday, when we saw the students that are here, they're so Crazy. gifted. Crazy, they're so talented. Super, super gifted. So talented. You have the greatest facility that I've ever seen. It's dope. Use it to your advantage. Mm. I'm being serious. I know it sounds wrong, but use it to your advantage because there are many kids your age who would love to be part of an institution like this. 100%. Do your thing, guys. Honestly. So, yeah. And Natalie, thank you for having us. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. It's so much. cool to be here, yeah. man. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We'll speak soon and we'll catch up on all your musical adventures to come. Definitely. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Sure. <laughs>